Hi, I'm Katie Simmons, Managing Associate at Wombleborn Dickinson. And I'm Rebecca Hewting, a barrister at Four Pump Court. And in celebration of Business Women's Day, Wombleborn Dickinson, Four Pump Court and the Society for Computers of Law have teamed up to introduce you to a group of inspiring women working in law and tech. And over the next couple of weeks, we'll be speaking with women from across the law and tech world who have carved out their careers covering the private practice, in-house, public sector and the judiciary. These exceptional women will share their stories, advice and explore challenges in these bite-sized videos. We do hope you enjoy watching these videos as much as Katie and I enjoy chatting with the speakers. And on that note, we hope you'll also join us on the 22nd of September, which is International Women's Day, when we will speak with Triple Olympian Fran Housel on the topic of big goal setting, challenge and ambition. Today, I'm going to be speaking with Caroline Churchill, who is a partner in Wobblebun Dickinson's commercial team. Caroline specialises in non-contentious technology and data work. So Caroline, what advice would you give to yourself if you could go back in time to say when you were at university? Oh, um, I would say to be confident. I think when I was at university, I probably struggled a little bit with confidence. And um, I think that something I learned over the years that being confident and having a curious mind certainly helps you um, as you embark on your career. So one of the things that I would say to myself back at university is ask lots of questions and really try and understand how things work, how things fit together and what the objectives are um, in relation to whatever it is that you're working on. And the other advice that I would probably give to myself when I was at university is um, to have, a, have an eye on what's happening with um, technology and how that may um, explode in the future. Because whilst I, I've always had an interest in tech and that's something that um, I probably grew up with because my father was really interested in it and it's something that rubbed off on, on me as well as my siblings, is that um, you know, how we use technology was really going to change how we do things. And I wish I'd had more of it more of a keen eye on that um, as I was going through certainly my my early career you never know if had I looked at the world in a slightly different way I may have taken a different career path rather than ending up um, being a, a tech lawyer and what is your favorite part of your job so I think my favorite element of my job um, is how tech and data has converged and I've seen quite a difference over the years so when I went to university it was back in the early 90s and things are very different then from a technology perspective and indeed when I worked for a technology provider in the late 1990s uh, how we use technology and how we as humans interact with devices has changed the world massively and I find that really interesting so my favorite element is seeing how tech and data work together how we use that to improve our lives, how my clients may use um, a technology solution to make improvements or it could be other um, cost cutting objectives that they may have. So I like to see what their aim is and how they're trying to get there and how I can help them get to that point. So it's the, the whole um, piece around the tech and data, um, getting to see the world through my client's eyes because they'll see it differently to me. And I find that quite fascinating, you know, what's the key drivers of their business? Um, what are they trying to get from this particular um, solution? So I find that really interesting. I like the technology side of it and I like the people side, because often on a large technology transaction, you're working with um, lots of people from all different parts of the business and they see the world through a different lens. So it's trying to pull all those different um, threads together to make the best deal possible for your client and also pulling that together and um, trying to see what the other side is going to do. So I enjoy the, the strategy piece around it. So whether it's the technology roadmap strategy and also the, the negotiation strategy. So I find that really interesting. And I think that's probably the thing that's kept me um, in my role for quite a few years now. And um, you never know what you're gonna um, get across your desk. You never know who you're gonna be really working with and it can lead to some very interesting discussions. Um, and you, you, learn, you learn so much. You learn how um, different technologies look at data in a different way, the outputs, 
um, you, you often, you know, some of the work that I do, I can see how um, technology is used very early on and then it's been developed and, um, and we use it more um, broadly in, you know, in everyday life. So that's been quite an interesting journey and that's what keeps me interested in it and keeps me, keeps me in my chair working those long hours that as lawyers we often do. How did you first get into technology as a lawyer? Um, when I um, was at university back in 91 to 94, um, I was a, a very keen interest on commercial contracts. And when I went into um, law school, I started to see more about um, technology and how that may um, impact on what we do. And there was a body of case law at the time that piqued my interest. It was something that cropped up in commercial contracts. So I found that interesting. And because of my technology background as a child, seeing the things that my dad did, it piqued my interest. And I've got two older brothers and they're often playing on computers. So I, I had a, a reasonable understanding of technology and what it could do. And I wanted to take that practical knowledge that I'd picked up and use it in a business environment. So I went to work for Hewlett Packard back in the late 1990s. And that really developed my interest on seeing technologies develop, how it can be used in the workplace. And it's just, I think it's a probably a personal preference. Some people um, you enjoy working in different sectors, but it was something that to me made sense. I, I enjoyed seeing how technology could help um, how we do things. It changed how I did things. Um, I, I can remember when I was, um, helping my father back in his business, working on an old electronic typewriter. So when the word process was released in the late 80s, to me, that was a massive game changer. So it was, it was seeing how you know, those technology um, and users interact, which is something I found interesting. And how did I get there? I think I got there through um, asking questions and being inquisitive and pushing myself and wanting to be involved in uh, different types of technology transactions to gain as much experience as I could. So different parts of the business, whether it was um, uh, looking at uh, you know, software development contracts um, for clients or, or whether it's looking at um, systems integration or technology outsourcing. So it was trying to get um, a really broad range of um, experience under my belt and to see how perhaps technology was developing. And one of the things that um, I certainly began to notice in the early 2000s was how the internet was changing how we do business. And I was fascinated with the whole e-commerce um, thing and, I, and the dot-com bubble at the time. So working with clients that were testing the boundaries and trying to do different um, it being creative and, and, and doing different things in that space and making sure that I was available to, to work on those transactions and, and to be in the right place at my firm at that time. I think that stood me in good stead um, because I, I felt that as a junior tech lawyer, I had a lot to learn. Um, and I guess the advice, going back to your first question about, you know, what advice would you give yourself back at university was, not to be frightened of that learning and um, knowing that um, you, you, to be as good, you, as good as you can and put your best self forward, you have to learn and you have to um, apply yourself and be exposed to as many things as possible and not to expect to know everything overnight. Frustratingly, many women in tech consider that they have been discriminated against at some point in their career. Caroline, do you have any advice for women who feel that their gender has affected the way that they are treated or perceived? Um, I, I mean, this is something that um, I've certainly experienced. And I think that um, the advice I would give is that times are changing. When I first started off um, working in the city in the 90s, life was quite different. And I had a few instances where um, I was judged on how I looked and being young, female and blonde and um, presented with, um, you know, asking, you know, when's your boss going to arrive when I turned up at a meeting and things like that. It, sometimes it can make you um, 
you know, think that you can't do the job and um, people are expecting some you know, something else and it does knock your confidence so it goes back to that confidence issue that I, I mentioned previously that you know being confident is key and um, don't be intimidated by um, if you feel that you have been treated differently I always say to myself you know don't let self-doubt creep in you're good at this you've been doing it for a long time even if you're starting off you know you, you're good at it you've got yourself through university and law school um, you can do it. Don't let imposter syndrome creep in. I know as sometimes as women, we do suffer a little bit from that. Um, but don't say yes to opportunities. You know, put yourself out there, put yourself into the position of trying to learn as much as possible. And that adds to your confidence. And also um, track your successes. So you can look back and think, well, actually, I've done this and I've achieved that. And then that led on to this. And that then helps to build your confidence. And um, helps you know your subject matter and helps you know how to deal with situations that sometimes may be a little bit difficult. So I hope that answers your, your question. Caroline, thank you very much for your insight today. I really appreciate it.